The other week at Austin Country Club, Rory was going viral for hitting absolute bombs. Rest send there, didn't he? Holland to the green! Blew it onto the green! Oh, and it's gonna look break at right. this. No! Just look at these averages from this past weekend. They're absolutely insane. But what a lot of people don't know, he did all of this with a shorter driver. And we're not just saying a little bit shorter, we're talking about two inches shorter than the standard length. And not only did Rory hit it much straighter with this driver, he hit it longer as well. He hit it over 400 yards today. That's gotta be the neighborhood. No, that's 400. That's 400 easy. Now, what if I told you you could see an even bigger increase in distance and accuracy than Rory McIlroy if you shortened your own driver? And I'm not just saying this. This has actually been studied. For essentially anyone who isn't a scratch golfer, you will see significant increases in accuracy. And depending on your skill level, you'll see an increase in distance or the same amount of distance as your longer driver. Now, let's break this study down a little bit further. The study compared five handicap groups who compared a 45 inch driver to a 43 inch driver. The first group ranged from a 24 to 36 handicap. And with the shorter driver, they averaged a yard more of distance and were nine yards more accurate. The next handicap group was 18 to 23 and they averaged an extra yard of distance and another nine yards more of accuracy. 12 to 17 handicappers averaged an extra yard and a half of distance and were eight yards more accurate on average with the shorter driver. Six to 11 handicappers averaged an extra yard of distance and were seven yards more accurate. And our last group, which was scratched to five handicap golfers, they actually lost a yard of distance but they were six yards more accurate on average with the shorter driver. But something's not adding up. If 99% of players hit a shorter driver better, then why are all the golf shops selling a ridiculously long driver? Well, it's actually really simple. You are most likely to buy the driver you hit the farthest one time. Even if you test out a driver and hit it dead straight 270 every time, you wouldn't buy that driver if there's another driver you hit 300. Even if every other shot was terrible, you remember that one perfect shot. Because everyone's initial thought is, if I get time to practice with this driver, I'll hit it 300 every time. And guess which driver is most likely to get that one perfect drive when you're testing it out? You guessed it, the longer driver. So before we teach you more about how and why you should shorten your driver, we're giving away a sleeve of Pro V1 to so the subscriber who leaves the best comment below. We're almost to 5K subs, win some Pro V1s, it's a win-win. So technically there is more potential with a longer driver, even if that potential is nearly impossible to reach. And let's be honest. If Rory McIlroy can't hit a longer driver, you probably shouldn't be either. So it makes a lot of sense why you would hit a shorter driver straighter, but how would you hit a shorter driver farther on average than a longer driver? Well, it all comes down to hitting the center of the face more consistently. With the shorter driver, you're more likely to find the center of the face, therefore increasing ball speed at a greater rate, raising that smash factor up, and you get farther distance on average. Even if your swing speed may be slightly lower with the shorter driver. Now, one very important thing I wanna point out, I'm not just telling you this based on some study. I've actually played a shorter driver myself for the last two years, and I can verify from my own game, I believe the study is legit. Now, I know some of you are still not convinced. So three months ago, me and my friend Chris decided to test it out. Chris played with the Sim 2 Max D driver, and at the time of this video, he was playing at a 30 handicap. We both played our regular driver heads and hit 30 shots with the shorter shaft and 30 shots with the longer shaft, and here were the results. That was... That was your best one so far, I think, right? Yeah. With Chris's longer driver, he averaged 187 yards of distance and had an average offline of 41 yards. This was his furthest drive at 228 yards. Next, Chris would play the shorter driver and we added a little lead tape to make sure the swing weight was correct. Nice. Nice! 210 carry, 94 swing speed. It was pretty much perfectly square. I mean, that's your farthest of the day. Not only would Chris hit his longest drive of the day with the shorter driver, he also increased his carry three yards, his total distance six yards, and his offline an average of 10 yards. I'm more accurate without the sacrifice of distance, which is like the biggest thing I was worried about by going from a longer shaft to a shorter shaft. Right. Next up, we had Jock, a six handicap, test out the shorter driver first, and then he moved to the longer driver. 
Oh, that's my best carry right there. Jock's farthest drive with the short driver would go to 282 yards. He would average 258 yards of distance and an average offline of 33 yards. And for the single digit handicap, the longer shaft definitely helped him hit his farthest drive farther oh, than the shorter wow. shaft driver. 278, <laughs> wow. I ended up averaging 242 yards with the longer driver, mostly because of shots like this. Oh, that sucked. That was my launch angle, 3.9. I averaged 16 yards less with the longer driver, but somehow I was four yards more accurate. I think the main reason for that was the fact that I couldn't get the ball up off the ground, which caused it not to travel as far in the air and kept it a little more accurate. Now, if you're like me a year and a half ago, you might be miserable off the tee with your driver. For me, I felt like I could never have a good shot at the green, and I did care about my distance, but I was like, if I can just have a look at the green, I'm gonna be happy playing golf. So the reason I shortened mine in the first place was because I just wanted to get consistent off the tee. So what length I recommend depends on where your skill level's at. If you're someone who just wants to get consistent off the tee, I would go down all the way to 43 and a half inches. That's what I did for a year. I got really confident with that length. And then a year later, I put my driver up to 44 and a half inches when I got more comfortable hitting it off the tee. Now, before you run off to your local pro shop and tell them to shorten your driver, there's one key detail we need to go over. Swing weight. You don't need to understand how this works, but you need to make sure when you go to your pro shop and have them shorten your driver that they get the swing weight correct. To do this, all you need to do is buy some lead tape, give it to the pro shop when they shorten your driver and tell them you want your swing weight at the end to be around D2 to D5 and you should be all set to go. 